Hello everyone, my name is Linda. Um, I recognise some of you out there. I teach maths here on Saturdays, but for the rest of the week I'm a student at UNSW and I'm in my fifth year of study. So let's get into the talk. So my talk's going to be a little bit different to the one you've heard before. I'm going to talk very, very little about me, um, a tiny bit about high school, and I'm going to talk mostly about medicine. Okay. So about me, I'm a fifth year med student at UNSW. I went to James Rist Agricultural High School and something that's not up there that's also was a huge part of my life in year 12 was I was a matrix student um, and probably became a huge part of my life because you know year 12 is really all over the place but matrix kind of taught me how to put it into a structured form and it put me with people who are equally driven if you look around you people are here because they're driven and you know these are the kind of people that you want to associate with and you want to hang out with and study with um, okay, so we'll go through why would you possibly want to do medicine and if you decide to do it, how do you get into medicine? Then we'll go over what UNSW medicine is like and then I'll just give you some pieces of advice. So why would you want to do medicine? It's a very eye-opening and exciting course. It, think about it, if you can understand why your body works, why, why do you have that headache, why, why is your leg sore, if you can look at your body and understand why that's happening, it's, you know, it's amazing. And your friends come up to you and they go, why is this happening to me? And you can explain all that to them and they look at you in awe and surprise. Unfortunately though, it's not exactly like what you see on TV. It's not like Grey's Anatomy, it's not like Scrubs, it's not that exciting. There's lots of clinical experience. If you're not the kind of person who likes sitting in lecture theatres all day, reading textbooks all day, this is probably one of the courses that you might want to do. Okay, the, you spend a lot of time in hospital. You do have some lectures, some pracs, but you know, as you progress through the course, the majority of the time is spent in hospital where you're following a team around and you're learning through practical experience rather than theoretical study. Unfortunately, it is a long course with many hours. So in UNSW, it's a six-year course. UWS, it's five years, and UCID, as you just heard, is seven years if you do the undergrad course. It has many hours, so it's pretty much a five-day-a-week course. It's not like your commerce, um, not like your law, where you have about three days a week. Okay, it's five days, it's pretty much nine to five. It's constantly challenging, and by that I mean every single day you're learning something new. You're learning something new, not just in medicine, but you're learning something new in communication studies, how to talk to people, how to study, um, and of course you're learning your medical work. Unfortunately, it's a lifetime of study. What I mean by that is, after you graduate, after six years at UNSW or wherever else you're studying, you have more exams. So you become an intern, then you do an exam after that, then you become a resident, you do an exam after that, and you keep doing exams. You probably have about another 10 years worth of exams after you graduate. And even after that, you have to keep up to date, so you have to keep studying. So if you don't enjoy studying and learning, this is not the course for you. Um, the good thing is you have job security. Okay? As soon as you graduate, there is a position waiting for you in some local hospital somewhere. Okay? And where you choose to go after that, that is up to you. Unfortunately, it's got unconventional hours, especially as a junior doctor, you'll be expected to work night shifts as long as day shifts. So, you know, public holidays, they're not public holidays if you're a doctor. Um, night shifts, they can go for 12 hours, 15 hours, you can do double shifts, 20 hour shifts, who knows. But overall, it's extremely rewarding and this is probably one of the most important reasons. There's nothing like the feeling that you get when you see a patient who finds out they've been cured, whether it be something little, whether it be, you know, you're cured of a headache, or whether it be something huge like you're cured of cancer, the joy that you see in their faces, there aren't many professions out there that you can get this from. So if you've decided, after hearing those, that you want to get into medicine, or even after hearing those, you still want to get into medicine, how to go about doing it. So for UNSW, there are three aspects. There's your UMAT, there's your interview, and there's your ATAR. Your UMAT comes first. Um, or just, so your exam this year is on the 27th of June. 
And the last day to register is the 3rd of June, so you still have time to do it if you haven't decided yet. One of the most common questions I'm asked is, do I need to do UMAT courses? The UMAT exam is a very overwhelming exam. It's like nothing you've done in high school. There's a lot of content and there's very little time. So if you don't feel like you need courses, you need to do practice questions. It's not the kind of exam you can just waltz into and expect to get good marks in. Okay, you need to be able to practice. You need to be familiar with it. So when you go in there, you know what the structure's like and you know how to manage your time. Okay? Any practice that you do, you need to do it under timed conditions, timed exam conditions. That last point on that, don't be late, it sounds really obvious, but UMAT, <coughs> they don't let you go in if you're late. They shut the doors and nobody is allowed in for any excuse. So during my UMAT exam, I heard all this banging outside and that was people who were late and they couldn't do it. They had paid for the UMAT, they had plans to do medicine, who knows, they probably got a really good ATAR, but they couldn't get into med because they were late for the UMAT. So you don't want to go through that. And do it. Unless you're absolutely sure that you don't want to do anything med-related, do the UMAT, just in case. What if you change your mind? You know, what if you... I actually had a friend who didn't do the UMAT because she thought she'd never get the ATAR high enough to get in. Um, she ended up getting 99.90, and she, you know, she hugely regretted not doing it. She's doing, like, I don't know, commerce or something now. Not to say anything bad about commerce. Um, so after you do the UMAT, there's the interview, and the interview, you actually get an offer for that in late October. So that's actually before you get your ATAR result. So they give you an interview based on what they think of you from what you sent in on your form and your UMAT. Okay, so ATAR hasn't come into it at all yet. So with the interview, it's a really relaxed interview. It's you, there's um, someone from med faculty in there, and there's someone from the community. So don't lie, be yourself. They really just want to get to know you. The questions aren't trying to test you, they're just trying to see what kind of person you are. If anything, if you want to prepare for the interview, practice talking to people, talk to strangers, just get your people skills up. Okay, they just want to see that you can communicate and you're not shy. Okay, so after the interview, you do your HSC and you get your ATAR. The minimum ATAR to be eligible is 96.0, so that's for you to actually put it on your application form. The median ATAR for entry actually ends up being greater than 99.6. So what that means is if you take all of the students who got into med, say in the previous years, and you ranked them in order, the middle score is 99.60. Okay, and that reflect that doesn't mean that if you get under that, you won't get it. That's just the middle score after you rank them. Okay, and the reason it's so much higher than the minimum ATAR is because of the competition into the actual degree. So if you look at last year's numbers, um, there were about 3,500 applications, and from those, 156 local applicants were selected. Okay, so that's about a 4% entry rate. And that's why the ATAR gets dragged up so high. Um, there's also what's called bonded places, and those places are for local students as well, but it's where you agree to go for, I think, five years to a rural place after you graduate. And that's the same thing. You do the same course, it just means that you've committed to spending five years in a rural place. And that's probably a few, I don't know, 20 more places or so. Don't give up. If you think you're looking at your grades now and your ranks now, and you think you're not doing so well, and it means that you can't get into the course that you want, don't give up, because you can change your ATAR just by doing extremely well in your trials, extremely well in your HSC. And it's only April now. You've got a long time to improve before then. Okay. I probably didn't do so well in my term one exams in year 12 either. I was probably in the last quarter of the grade, but I managed to get myself up there by my trials. And if I can do that, anyone can do that. Okay, so remember entry is based on a combination of the three. So what that means is if you really wow them in your UMAT and in your interview, then maybe your ATAR isn't so important. So what then is UNSW Medicine? UNSW Medicine is a six-year course. It's split into three phases, two years each. Phase one, um, quite relaxed. You have lectures, you have tutorials, you have practicals. It's five days a week. You have clinical attachment of two hours once a fortnight, and that's where you just kind of go and start practicing talking to patients. You have a written exam every eight weeks, 
and you have an end of phase integrated clinical exam. So what that is, is it's um, a verbal exam. So you're being tested in front of a patient and there's no written component to that. Okay. So after that, you move on to phase two. And phase two is divided into one year research and one year coursework. And you can choose which order to do that in. So if you feel like a break from all the studying, you can do the research first. Or if you're enjoying the studying, you can do that later. And the one year research, that's actually really beneficial. Um, you, can, you have the opportunity to, you select a topic, and you have the opportunity to have your paper published in an international medical journal. And if you're studying towards being a specialist, that is actually a huge advantage over other students from other universities. I've actually had doctors who have graduated from other unis come up to me and say, I wish I had one year of compulsory research. Because now I can't, it's so hard to get into specialist course of my choosing. But if I had had that research year, that would have put me way ahead. So after the research, you do one year of coursework, and that's eight week rotations where you're rotating through the different specialties at hospital. And that's pretty much about three days of clinical, so hospital time a week, and two days where you're at uni. Um, so after phase two, you do an exam. And the exams that you do are metacumulative exams. So what I mean by that is, if you do an exam in first year, you can't forget those contents for second year because they will be expected to be known as well. Okay, so all your knowledge builds up and they continue to be tested. So phase three, another two years, you have an elective term. And what that is, it's an opportunity for you to go overseas. You can go anywhere that you want as long as the uni accepts you. So we've had students who go to Harvard, who go to Cambridge, who go to Yale, or your Ivy Leagues. And we've had students who go to South Africa, who go to the developing countries. And it's really interesting to compare medicine in a developing country with Australia, where we're quite developed. Um, so you go through clinical rotations as well. But this time, it's about one day at uni every four weeks. And the rest of the time is completely hospital time. And what that means is you have to study yourself. These doctors are busy, they're not going to teach you um, unless you, you know, follow them and keep questioning them. So you have to go home and you have to study yourself. So a lot of medicine is self-study. You, you have to have the willpower to study and you have to be interested and passionate. Okay, and after that you do the final exam. And as I said, it's cumulative, so this final exam covers everything. Okay, everything that you've done in six years. So just to finish off with some advice. Keep up with your schoolwork. Like Kerry said before, if you don't understand, make sure you understand. You want to keep up. Keep up. You don't want to let it slide. Because when you get up to your trials, you want to know everything. You want to be in a position where you can just practice, um, do past papers. You don't want to be learning the topics again. <coughs> don't choose a course because of ATAR. I can see most of the room is Asian here, and I know that Asians, you know, they like to choose a course because they got a high ATAR. And what a waste of an ATAR if you choose a course that's low ATAR. Not true. It's a waste of time and money if you choose the wrong course. So many people drop out of a course after one year because they chose it for the ATAR and they hated it. You know, so choose a course that you like. Have, really think about where you want to end up with in life. Um, if, you, if you want to be doing you know, office hours, you want to be sitting in a nice office all day, don't do medicine. It's not an easy course. You will be walking around. You will be doing long hours. It's tiring. If you become a surgeon, you're standing for seven hours straight. You know, so think about everything. Don't just think about the ATAR. Um, do your matrix homework. Oh, sorry. Do your matrix homework. Do your tests. They seem really repetitive and tedious now, and I probably thought that as a student as well. But it's the repetitive nature that makes you learn it properly, and it's, it's that that really structures your exam, how you're going to structure it in the exam as well, because you write it out so many times, and you make corrections each time you write it, so that when you do your actual exam, you've got the structure down perfect. Burnout is a myth, and I say that because you know you've got one year of year twelve. If you're gonna have to, if you have to put some hard study in for one year, and then you've got the rest of your future planned out for you, then do it. You know, don't relax in year twelve. Study if you need to do an all nighter, do it. Just relax the week after. Don't put things off, and have fun. I didn't believe it in year twelve, but year twelve is one of the best years of your life. You have so much fun in year 12 and if you don't take advantage of it, you won't have time to later. So, thank you.